this this was a different kind of Christmas sermon, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually I'm touchy feely, ooey gooey stuff, you know, and that's okay. Correct. It's, yeah, it's good. It's but... Robin's fault though, because <laughs> I would always ask her, "What do you want this Christmas?" He goes, "Well." Don't be so heavy on the knowledge this time. How about just give me something to make me love and enjoy Christmas, some good music and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, And uh, I said, well, I, okay. And then I started writing the sermon. I started yeah. looking at the overall, trying to look at the overall message of the text. And I started coming together about, it's almost like Luke wants us to know he was rejected yeah. by everybody. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I mean, why include the Herod story? I've always, well, why include the Herod story? Right. And Matthew, or, um, yeah. Why include the gospel writers? Why would they include so many? Well, in Simeon, why include that right. story? Why mm -hmm. And that statement of what he was going to do. Right, correct. <laughs> he, and he even told Mary, a sword will pierce your own soul too. Yeah. So he's telling it's, Mary, it's not going to be, all, you, I mean, it's, it's not going to be all fun and games. It's yeah. going to be hard. And then you think about the Christmas story is to remind us that you, you have to decide what you're going to do with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And until you do, Christmas story is just a story. Right. Yeah, exactly. I really like, um, gosh, there's, there's actually a lot of moments that I definitely want to talk about. Um, but definitely how Jesus came to be Reject. in the, rejected in the lowest place uh, instead of what naturally you would think a king would be, you know, the sounds of trumpets, the you know, the, yeah. the red carpet and, and this whole huge, magnificent moment. Uh, but that's not... What happens? Yeah, yeah. I wonder too, Drew. Sometimes I wonder if, if because Jesus came as the Jewish Messiah, mm -hmm. how much of all of that had more to do with prophecy than it did? Oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to appear to be humble, right. well, not to appear, but I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to come into the world through the back door, yeah. wrong side of the track. How much of it simply was? I mean, if it's true that the angels made the announcement to the shepherds who were watching the Passover lambs. Mm -hmm then Jesus didn't appear to the shepherds to prove that the lowest uh, uh, blue collar worker was the first one to hear. Right, right, uh, right. That's still fun. I did that a week ago. That's still, it's still interesting to realize who he, he came to those three different groups of people. And that Correct. still stands yeah. true mm -hmm. in the Gentile mind. Yeah. But in the Jewish mind, how much of that is, dude, it had nothing, it had everything to do with fulfillment of prophecy. Right, yeah, exactly. Jesus is trying, from the get go, the angels are trying to say to the shepherds, you don't need these Passover lambs anymore. Right, right. The, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice is, is coming to an end. The ultimate yeah. lamb is about to be sacrificed. Yeah. Now that would make sense to the Jews. Right, yeah. Uh, and then even the wise men coming from the East mm -hmm. uh, seems to be strictly a Gentile thing, but I wonder how many of them were familiar with, oh, they, of course they were familiar with Daniel's exile in Babylon. Right. Of course they were familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Now Daniel must have told them. Everything in Matthew's gospel especially Everything, and I hesitate to use this word, but everything reeks, it smells <laughs> of Jewish prophecy yeah. and, and Jewish history. Yeah. So right. that this was the best account of, of uh, the, the Jews to, to embrace the Messiah. Right, exactly. Uh, I definitely <clears throat> could see that and see how, it, yeah, like it's, it's not supposed to be this magnificent fulfillment, but it's a fulfillment. It is. And, and it's a deep one, and it's one that, brings all people of course like he uh talked about the genealogy yeah of really that's amazing that all all everything of who jesus is is trying to tell us that all of us are included uh in his family in, in the adoption and i still believe what jesus said in luke 7 still rings true and mm -hmm. it's you know we we played a dirge for you you didn't mourn we danced and sang you yeah. called us wine beverage you know it doesn't really matter what's in there if you're mm -hmm. not seeking you, you're not going to find right you, you, you can always pick any story apart. You can yeah, pick anything yeah. apart. Yeah. You know, even the, if you and I email back and forth, you can't read tone, you can't read, you know, you, you can pick anything I say apart if you're not, if you want. Right. Now, if you're searching for truth, you can look, you can study, you can read, and you can say, hey, you know, there's a theme here. Mm. And mm. over time, you arrive at the truth. So I do believe there has to be a seeking, a certain amount of seeking before you're going to find God. Right, yeah. Oh, 100%. And then now going into... Luke really saying Jesus knew he was going to be rejected and yet embraced it. Yep. And that's hard for us. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if you want to talk a little more about like embracing that hard truth. Yeah. I <clears throat> Somehow Jesus over the course of his life, and I do believe Luke too, he did grow in stature, wisdom. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I'm not sure how all that works, but he did grow in relationship with the Father. Yeah. At his baptism, I believe that he accepted full on the role of messiahship and to and to go to the cross for the sins yeah. of the world. And once mm -hmm. he accepted that, he was not turning back. Yeah. And uh, 
I believe that he knew the only way salvation could come is through crucifixion, which means he had to be rejected. Yeah. Had to be rejected. If mm -hmm. he would have been received by the Romans and by the Jews, there would have been no crucifixion. There would have been no sacrifice for sin. So he knew he came yeah. for the purpose. And I think in heaven, in his, as the pre-existent Christ, before he became an embryo, mm. he left heaven knowing he was going to be rejected. Right. Right. Something happened when he when he became like us in all ways in Hebrews mm -hmm. two and Hebrews four. Something happened where he on earth as a human he he began to grow in wisdom and stature. But before he yeah. left heaven, he left glory knowing what he was getting himself right. into, right. and he was willing to do it because the heart of the Father wants to bring as many far from God near as possible. Mm -hmm. The only way to do that was through the sacrifice of Christ. Right. Sometimes in the past, I've, I've had people say to me. You know, it seems to me there could have been another way other than a bludgeon sacrifice on a cross. <laughs> well, the problem with that is that you, you, God is going to fulfill an Old Testament history. Right. The, the whole sacrificial system, the whole point of it in the Old Testament history, which, by the way, this is where I tell people, get out of your cultural arrogance and think your culture is the most advanced. Right. Because the culture in which Jesus entered, this was the way to do it. Mm -hmm. He may not enter into our culture if this was the time for the Messiah to come. Mm -hmm. But in that culture, doing what Jesus did was the perfect way yeah. because he was the sacrificial lamb, the sacrificial system. God <clears throat> introduced it in the Old Testament to show his people the seriousness of sin yeah. because life for life, not, mm -hmm. because G not because God hated animals, yeah. but because when you see the death of any living thing, mm -hmm. there is a stark reality. Right. And, he, and God wanted them to see the seriousness of their sin right. and the death that it causes. Yeah. So it's, it's the perfect scenario for mm -hmm. Christ then to be sent into the world to become the sacrificial lamb. Mm -hmm. And I got news for you. There's a gazillion other ways God could have done it, but you would have rejected all of them. Right. You, you know, you always want a different way, another way. Yes. If correct. you're really truly looking and searching for God, this story, the overarching story from Old and New Testament will make sense to you. Yeah. And if you're not, you you can find ways to pick it apart and say, right. well, I I don't think so. I don't, my God wouldn't be like this, and my God Correct. wouldn't be like that. Of course, your God would agree with everything you think is right <laughs> and wrong. But, yeah. But sooner or later, you know, it takes humility. It really does take humility. To say, yes. you know what, I'm not God. Yeah. And this is why I always say to people, Drew, here is the question. Number one, does God exist? Mm -hmm. That's your first question. Yeah. If if all logic will point to the reality, of course He does. Now. Has God revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ? The only way to answer that is through the reality or the negation of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. If right. Jesus rose from the dead, right. no other religious leader did that or even mm -hmm. claimed to do that right. or even claimed to do anything other than be born, live, and die. Yeah. If he rose from the dead, then yes, God revealed himself through the person of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I need to listen to what he said. Mm -hmm. Correct. If you don't believe that God revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ, then you have to ask yourself, has he revealed himself at all? Mm -hmm. Is there any working knowledge of God? And that is the dilemma every person on the earth faces. Do you yeah. have to decide what to do with Jesus? Mm -hmm. Not to what to do with God. Right. Because right, right. if, if, if God didn't reveal himself, there's nothing to do. Mm -hmm. God exists. He's there. So what? But if he did reveal himself in the person of Jesus Christ, here's what that means. You are a sinner. You are lost. Right. You are going to hell. Separation mm. from God, which that's a whole other topic. Right. What is hell really? You are separated from God for eternity. Yeah. And there's going to be nothing good. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Yeah. You receive him or reject him. And then right. you, you, you're basically, when you meet God, you'll find out. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's that simple. Yeah. It's not, well, what about all these people who are sincere in their religion. Right. Okay, what what do other religions believe? Other religions believe if you do this, this, and this, then the gods or God, and only only in Islam do we have God or or Allah. Yeah. Uh, but in all other religions, it's a multitude of gods. It's right. it's it's that's that's goes back to religious systems lacking in coherence, which mm -hmm. is a lo logical problem. Right. Should be for most people. But what is religion? You do this, 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 and this, and then you may. Come back as another person, which you have no proof of, or right. you may you may uh, get into whatever's next. Yeah. See, that's the thing about the other religions; they don't even talk to you about what is next. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a possibility. It's right. either nirvana, or some, with some existence that nobody can really fully understand. Yeah. Or it's 
you just go back to dust or you're reincarnated yeah. or my goodness. I mean, there's, there's no coherency and clarity. Yeah. That's why I say people don't tell me all religions are the same. They're mm-hmm. not. Correct. Uh, Jesus gives you a coherent worldview of yeah. origin, meaning, morality, destiny. Correct. And you have to make up your mind. Either he, right. either he's not the revelation of God or he is. If he is, you've got to change. Right. Yeah, if yeah. he's not, you're taking a shot. You're taking a chance. Right. Exactly. Is that, that I feel like that goes aligned with um, Blaise Pascal's his uh, uh, wager. Well said. Right. Most people yeah. don't understand that wager. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, that wager had a lot more to do with the fact that <clears throat> the existentialists were saying, why don't you just do what you do, want to do and be happy? Right. <laughs> and Pascal, well, that's what I'm trying to say to you. <laughs> I am doing what I'm doing. Jesus actually makes me happy. Mm-hmm. So his point was, if I'm wrong, I've lost nothing mm-hmm. because I'm happy. Right. Correct. If you're wrong, you've lost everything. Uh-huh. So yeah. that, that, that's, that's... Which is a, a really uh, good question to ask, especially in this series, because like you said, all of it is inconceivable, yet... Uh, it is so fulfilling yeah. and real yeah. to our souls <laughs> yeah. that the the hardest question, because as you're saying that, I'm thinking of like either a new believer or somebody who's just not there. And it's just really saying, am I willing to let go of the things that are holding me back yeah. from following this Jesus? Because it means I have to let go of the things that I like that are not of Jesus yeah. uh, in order to live this life. But I don't like that, right? Yeah. 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 And in reality, I, I want to, I want to do what I want while having assurance that I'm saved. Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And there's, there's, that's not possible. Yeah. The, you, you, you've opened up a good box there though, because, the, you know, I've always hesitated, but it, it is fair for a Christ follower or for a pastor to say to people, I want to tell you something. Your best life is with Jesus, because mm-hmm. you're thinking if I come to Jesus, I got to stop all these things. Mm-hmm. But what right. I'm telling you is the things you're doing are killing you, mm-hmm. and you know it. Mm-hmm. But but at least they're your death, you know. Right, you know, right, right. It's, it's it's my death, and I'm choosing. Yeah. What I'm telling you, you come over to Jesus, you're going to have a peace and a joy that's overarching that gives you more than anything that yeah. your past life has ever mm-hmm. given you. But that takes trust because yeah. you're not going to get that until you draw until you die to yourself. Right. But a he who loses his life will find it. Mm-hmm. So there's a part of pastors that want to just go down that path and say, "Look, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, it's better over here." Right. <laughs> you think it's not, but it's better. So come over here and try it. Yeah. But yeah. that's not the reason you come over here. Mm-hmm. The reason you come over here is because you're a sinner and you need forgiveness right. for of sin. If you come over here just to try it without going through that path, yeah. you know, without recognizing I am a sinner, I want God to come near, I want to come near to God, yeah. Jesus forgave me. Mm-hmm. Then you come over here, then you've got the Spirit of God in you, and then that transformation starts. Right. A lot yeah. of people just skip that. Well, I'm going to try mm-hmm. Christianity for a while. And it, what? <laughs> what, what are you trying exactly? You're correct. Well, I'm trying if I'm happier, if I'm more fulfilled. Right. Well, not until your sins are forgiven. <laughs> right, not until right, you have right. peace with God. So that's right. a that's a dilemma that 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 we have, and that's that's where the we go back to our discussion before the lights turned on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where what we are giving <clears throat> people in in Western Christianity far too often is that message. Jesus, oh, you're going to love it over here. Right, it's great. Right, right. Without repentance, without mm-hmm, sin, without, mm-hmm. and he's going to make your life so good. Yeah. And every weekend is about how much he loves you mm-hmm. and how you're not going to have problems. If you do, you're going to love the problems. Yeah. And there's some truth in that. But but you come to Christ. And we, we had a saying in the 90s when the secret service was at its uh, height. Oh, uh-huh. What you win them to is what you win them with. Mm-hmm. So if I win you, or what I, what I win you with is what I win you to. So if I win you with a light show, Mm-hmm. I've won you to a light show. Right. right, right. If I win you with, <clears throat> you know, possess, yeah. then I've won you to possess. If I win you with the cross, mm-hmm. I've won you to the cross. Yeah. And then you'll die to yourself and yeah. everything happens. So we, we definitely have to be careful without being judgmental. Correct. Because right. then you can go too far the other way. Just because a pastor is energetic, passionate, doesn't mean he's wrong. Right. Just because he's a great communicator and he's on fire for Christ, yeah. doesn't mean he's wrong. Right, right, right. But all I'm saying is, you better do some investigation. You can be hurt Correct. pretty quickly. Yeah. What's he like or she like internally? And you know how you find that out? One of the first, first things you ask is, how is the church governed? Mm-hmm. Yep. How is the church governed? Yeah. Do you have a board of elders and accountability? Right. Mm-hmm. That's a great safety measure. Yeah. yeah if yeah. you don't have that, you just, you, no man or woman is strong enough on their own. No man Correct. or woman is yeah. an island. The ego will definitely take over. Uh, if they don't have that measurement or the, that accountability of elders, 
with the same mission of saying we genuinely want God to be in place of this church, not the pastor or not the person. Yeah, dude. You know, I struggle because there's there's judging and then mm -hmm. there's discernment. Mm -hmm. And you know, being being a basketball player all all my life. I could be around a player for a few minutes and discern what kind of player he is. Yeah. 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 In practice, mm -hmm. I knew who to throw the ball to when the game's on the line. Yeah. I knew who was going to be courageous and who didn't want the ball. Don't give me the fear of failure. Yeah. And the guy who was confident. Then there was the guy who was just cocky. He thought he was all world, right, but you never right. knew what he was going to do. And he was definitely not a team player. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find that even now, when I am in crowds of people, as you get older, you don't you want to be careful of judging. Mm -hmm. But there's a discernment that comes. You know, you, you look if a, if a guy if if you talk to a pastor, if you come to meet a pastor and he doesn't look you in the eye, and he doesn't he doesn't care about you, and he mm -hmm. doesn't want to talk, and he acts like, oh, I got I've got my entourage here. Hey, you know, if you, come on, that's not judging. That's dude. Even <laughs> Jesus wasn't like that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know, Jesus stops and has time for Zacchaeus. Yeah. I'm not saying that pastors should have time for every individual. That's not possible. Correct. But when you are walking around with people, and I've had to watch myself in this because my problem is I'm I'm singularly focused. Yeah. So sometimes when I'm walking from the back door of the church to the cafe to get a coffee, I'm trying to get back because I got to preach in seven minutes. <laughs> right. I'm, I have to be careful that I I don't pass somebody by. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you 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 should be able to be around somebody for a, don't don't judge them on one or two occasions. Correct. You don't know what's yeah, going yeah. on. Mm. But if you're around your pastor for a long a length of time, you should know a little bit yeah, of right, what right. he or she is like. They're not yeah. going to be perfect. They're not don't don't expect that. Correct. But there's there's a sense in which is this guy a per is this guy a nar is this a narcissist? Is right. this somebody who wants to be seen and heard but not relatable to? Right. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the that's the great <clears throat> temptation of all pastors. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm on stage every weekend. People are telling me how wonderful I am, mm -hmm. and if you start to believe it, it's the beginning of the end. Oof, yeah, then it gets real scary, real fast. Uh huh. Yeah. They say you know you're Jim Jones and passing out the Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Mean, exactly. In one form or another. <laughs> oh, definitely. Which brings us to uh, part of your message where you do talk about um, my generation really wanting authenticity, wanting honesty, but yet is so attracted to uh, the show, the yeah, they're look, the They're aesthetic. confusing me. You're, you're yes. confusing yeah, 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 If I can yeah. be honest, you're very, yeah. you're confusing. I'm confused myself. I love you. I, I love your generation because you'll serve. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, yeah, yeah, you want to yeah. change the world. Love mm -hmm. that. I love I love your generation the, that they want to worship, and yeah. they're, uh, mm -hmm. they're, they are attracted to transparency. I yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. Well, hold on a second. Mm -hmm. There are two things about that. Yeah. Number one, transparency is not equal to repentance. Right. So just because I tell you all my struggle, what you should see, I hope you see that I'm fighting those struggles. Yeah. So if I just confess that I'm struggling, but there's no repentance, that I don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's transparency. I've told, I've given you the goods on me, but if I have no intention to make any changes, yeah. That you know, that's like when that's like when a young man or woman tells me I'm a Christ follower, and then I start praying. Well, tell me about your life. What, I want right. to hear about your devotional life. I want to hear about... And you know, too many times I've heard them say something like, well, I have this addiction to pornography. Mm -hmm. I said, well, are you fighting it? No, no. It's, it's just too tough for me to fight. God loves me. and Yeah. You're not following Jesus. Correct. Exactly. Okay. It's good that you admitted you got a problem. Yeah. We all do. Yeah. Are you fighting the battle? Right. Are you at least, right. are you at least trying to... The deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't come to me. Don't come to church and say, "Oh, I'm following Jesus. I, I'm a, I'm a Christ follower." When mm -hmm. there's no intention whatsoever, correct, to walk a holy life. Yeah. Even if you fall the rest of your life, it's just about intent. Yeah. It's like I'm saying, yeah. it's a matter of the will. Right. And mm -hmm. nobody knows the will, which is why we don't judge somebody. <laughs> which is why when somebody comes to me and says, "I'm struggling with this," I don't automatically write them off because right. this person's being honest. Yeah. And if your will is to struggle with that, you may struggle with that the rest of your life. But Jesus will carry you. Right. Exactly. It's when you say, "Ah, nah." Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that's that important, and, and that doesn't happen a lot, but it still happens some. Yeah, uh, yeah. Still I think it some. definitely happens. Uh, yeah, definitely to some, if not secretly to a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's okay. Yeah, it's right, like it's right, okay right. as long as I'm on, as long as I'm honest about yes, it. Yes, correct. No, no, <laughs> dude, like, no, it's not okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then that that goes back to the, the confusing part is why are you, why is your generation so attracted to stardom? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a difference between ours. My yeah. generation, okay, 
When I say my, we're going back now. Right, right, right. So when the Christian contemporary music came out and all of that, we, re, we, re, I don't know if many people know this, but Amy Grant went through a very difficult season mm. in her life because she had a great following. She was very humble. She dressed humbly. Uh, there was a lot of things. And then she kind of got star power and crossed over from the Christian to the secular world. Yeah. And I don't know how many people know this, but that was probably the worst two years of her life. She writes about it now mm -hmm. because she was having concerts and she'd have to cancel. Nobody was there. Nobody buying tickets because uh -huh. the Christian community felt she betrayed them. Yeah. And she started dressing differently, a little provocatively. Right. And stuff. So my generation was anti the bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. Yours isn't. No, not one uh, bit. <laughs> and let me say again, Nothing wrong with the bells and the whistles and the light, as long as there's yeah. content, as long mm -hmm. as there's depth, as long as there's mm -hmm. intent of character. Yeah. My generation was very slow to give ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. wanted to wait and see. Mm. Your generation is very quick. Yeah. Very, yeah, yeah, yeah. very like, woo, <laughs> you know? Right. And uh, I just, I'm trying to harmonize that. Yeah. The two. Yeah. And so I made the joke today that. Robin helped me see, hey, you, you know, you don't have to dress expensively, but the way you're dressing, you're going to repel people. They're not even going to hear you. <laughs> I said, okay, well, I'll let them, okay, I'll start doing that. But I, I don't want to get to the point where I've got, you know, $500 pair of shoes. Yeah, and, right, and, right. I don't, you know, I don't want the, don't want the, you know, I don't want to be backstage doing bench presses so that my arms look <laughs> right, big when right. I come out. You know, that, we got a problem now. Correct, yeah. So somewhere along... I, I I feel like I need to say to your generation, hey, I'm so proud of you for so many reasons, but yeah. don't give your don't give your heart away yeah. and your soul away so quickly. Correct. Yeah. Make yeah. sure that before you sit under the teaching of someone, because they do impact you. Mm -hmm. Before you mm -hmm. do it, you find a little bit more out. Yes. And you know, I, I go back to see for those of us who are older, Carl Lentz from day one was a red flag. Mm -hmm. From day one. Yeah. 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 And it had nothing to do with uh uh, his communication style. Yeah. Have more to do with his dress in public. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, we thought, Whoa, it, it was, yeah, you definitely. Really, you, know, you know, no. Yeah. There are some things I would call my pastor friends out on, yeah. and there are some things they would call me out on that we need to be called out on. Correct, yeah. Dude, I wouldn't, I would, you know, I've said to some, hey, dude, I wouldn't tell that joke in public. <laughs> I wouldn't do that, you know? Yeah. Uh, or I, I'm not sure I would, glorified that particular movie right right right. you know so we do need we're human correct we need to be held accountable mm -hmm. but if you put yourself in a position where there's nobody holding you accountable yeah i'm telling you what i'm saying to you is mm -hmm. i don't trust myself right <laughs> i would I, if i didn't have people holding me accountable i wouldn't trust myself i, mm -hmm. I, I would i don't know what i would do how i would dress correct. what i would act I, it, you know it goes to your head right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that's why i've always had a mentor in my life mm -hmm. and then when i do when I do engage, when I do encounter something, before I believe it, yeah. I will go to the mentor and say, "Okay, these people are saying this. What what do you see in, right, in my right, life? Right. If yeah. you don't have that, yeah, you'll either be too arrogant mm. or too sad because you'll believe <laughs> everything bad people right. say about you, uh -huh. or you'll believe everything good people say about you. <laughs> Neither one's healthy. Correct. You got to have somebody tell you the truth about who you yeah. are and how you're acting. And there are times my wife will say, you know. I know you, but the way you said that, it was kind of arrogant. Mm. See, I need to hear that. And your right. wife's the best one to tell you. Oh, 100%. Because, I, Jeff, I don't think you want to be doing that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that makes a lot of sense. And it's very interesting because I feel like, I guess, my generation or maybe the, the younger ones, like, I remember, I don't know, I don't know what stat it was, but I just remember there was a shift in asking children what did you want to be when you grew up and it was very a firefighter policeman um doctor doctor um a military all, general yeah military general yeah. all these uh valuable i guess yeah uh, uh titles contributions yes. to humanity it, exactly exactly so and then now it's i want to be the a youtube star yeah like i want to be the next rising star in music and <sighs> film and yeah. all this stuff which I mean, if if we if you look at Hollywood or if you look at the YouTube world, it's so damaging yeah. to the soul of oh, the person. Oh, absolutely. I mean, TikTok is a horrible thing, man. Forget absolutely. about what's on it. Forget yeah. about what's on it. I'm just talking about the fact of what it does to you. Co correct. You a watch you. you. I mean, you can do this for five five hours. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. And what contribution has it made? It's made you dumber. That's right. what it's done. Exactly. It's made you dumber. Yeah. And your eyes are probably shot. But oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. We're we're in that time where you've got to have accountability around you. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. And like I said, Drew, I'm not sure. 
when I was 16, I am not sure what I would have done if there was pornography on my phone available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. right. I, I wish I could tell you I'd have been holy and pure and never looked. But I'm telling you, when those hormones are flying and when you're <laughs> when you're trying to figure out who you are, yeah, and that yeah. comes on your screen, you're telling me, no, I, I, no, yeah, no, you got to have. That's why you have to have some kind of program on your devices right. as well. 100. Uh, percent If you don't, you're just not strong enough, man. Yeah, you're, correct. You're you're not. We're not. <laughs> Spirit is willing, flesh is weak. Yes, exactly. So that goes back. What I was trying. We kind of got side, I sidetracked yeah, no, a little bit good. there. But what I'm saying is that when Jesus came, he knew he was going to be rejected. Yeah. And he he knew that he would not fit the mold. Mm -hmm. And when we become holy, we won't fit the mold. Yeah. And I, I hit this pretty hard a few weeks ago mm -hmm. that some will be drawn to the Savior, many will be angry. Yeah. Because the light shines in the darkness. And when mm -hmm. it does, it exposes the darkness. Yeah. And I think we're learning more in, in modern day world how evil the world really is today more than we ever have mm -hmm. because of. Social media, I because saying, of how, yeah. I mean, you, the child trafficking, the human yeah. trafficking. The so now we know this world is evil. Yeah, there's an evil prince of the power of the air. Mm -hmm. Thank God that He sent His Son to die on the cross, mm -hmm. to be rejected and despised by men, but by the stripes, yeah, we're healed. And this is the beauty of it: mm -hmm. when you receive the Savior. The Holy Spirit comes inside you. Mm -hmm. You start to be able to distinguish between good and evil. Yeah. Until that happens, I'm not sure you can in a general sense, but mm -hmm. it's getting very confusing, mm -hmm. the difference between the two. Yeah. So I hope this Christmas that people say, have I really received the sun? Right. And if I haven't, I'm in darkness. Right. Exactly. So. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's such the principle of the message. And so it was really good. Hopefully people brought their families and friends for this one because I think it's important. Two wishes for Christmas that we'll have people far from God come near and yeah. that I get golf balls. There you go. Yeah, yeah. That's a easy. good place to stop. <laughs> yeah. <right there. laughs>